make your heart swell up a little bit, you probably need to call the doctor tomorrow and go in and get a check. <laughs> oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to welcome everybody here this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, do we have any first-time visitors that want to just kind of raise their hand? We'll say hi to them. Yeah, well, we're glad. Oh, right here. Yes. Very, very good. Welcome. We're so glad. Hope you'll come back and join us. Just a few announcements today. I want to remind you to take your bulletins home with you. Um, make sure you remember those in our community and our church that are on the prayer roll there. Um, the church office will be closed tomorrow for Memorial Day, and Nicole will be out um, May 31st through June 2nd. Uh, there will be no Wednesday night dinners again till fall, but I think the one this past Wednesday was very well attended, and the food was really good. Uh, by vacation Bible schools, June 13th through the 17th, with the theme of Discovery on Adventure Island. Uh, they're still looking for volunteers if you would like to contact April. Also need um, items such as empty toilet paper rolls. Uh, no, no. Toilet? They said that they can't use those after all. So oh, okay. Thank you. Everything like that. Uh, tropical decorations and gently used beach or bath towels for beach day. Also, they wanted me to let you know that there is food in the Buddington building. Uh, there's uh, sweets and also some vegetables. And they would love for you to take them. Now in prayer, I'd like to share a prayer that I found today for Memorial Day. I received it. It has no Arthur unknown. Got it off of the Xavier University website. As our nation pauses to remember those in the military who have given their lives for freedoms we enjoy, we pray you would have us all look to you for strength, comfort, and guidance. Be with all who serve in our armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection. Let peace prevail among all the nations, O oh God, and especially let your mercy rest upon our land as we acknowledge with thanksgiving your past goodness to this country. Preserve the lives of the men and women in uniform as they defend our country. Most of all, we pray that you return the hearts of all to your holy word, where we find the true peace for our souls that surpasses all understanding. Keep us repentant of sin, move us to know, Take hold and treasure your saving grace. In this peace and hope for eternity, we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to sing now? Amen. Again. How about a uh, song called I And Can It Be That I Should Can you Pay 363 or it's projected? This was written by one of the Wesley brothers from way back in the early Methodist movement. Let us all stand.
standing for the responsive reading. This will be found on page 807 of your hymnal and it's also projected. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. Your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is firm as the hand of You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations.
I, sometimes I forget where I am. I have to look at the picture to give me a nod or a <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm thine, O Lord. That's projected uh, on uh, page 419 in your hymnal. service where we share share the love of Jesus with each other and we share our giving if you brought your gift today there are baskets in the back and I also want to draw your attention to the gray bucket which is for the Gideons they'll have their presentation in a minute so you may want to give more after that but you can certainly give now before they give their presentation also and following the service so let's stand now and greet one another pass the peace of Christ and give our offerings that you brought them. I thought they didn't love us anymore, but all of a sudden they showed up again. So, uh, uh, that's, that's not the case. Uh, good friends of mine, uh, good Christian brothers, good neighbors, and good for Clay County. And as an extension of that, good for God's message to us. The uh, Gideon. Yeah, that's pretty good. So what, I, what we've got we're going to do before we introduce our, our, our speakers is show a little video about the Gideons. That was about three or four minutes long, uh, Randy. Something like that. Okay, so if we can fire that up, we'll we'll start out with a little video. Ephesians two twelve says that to be without Christ is to be without hope. To live without Christ is to live in a state of uncertainty with little expectation of the future and with no real solutions to life's most difficult challenges. Much of the world exists in this state of hopelessness.
But to find hope in the person of Jesus Christ is to find hope in its purest form. Hope in Christ is more than a momentary respite from pain, more than a wish of things to come. It is true and lasting. It provides us with a strong and assured expectation of what God has promised, and it changes who we are and how we live. This hope is part of our salvation. It provides power for living. It gives us joy. It gives us protection. It gives us strength and boldness. It gives us comfort and peace. It gives us confidence in ministry. As children of God, we abound in the hope of Jesus Christ, daily experiencing the blessing of calling Him Savior. If we believe His Word is alive and absolute, we should not be able to contain the hope inside of us. With every Bible we place, with every scripture we distribute, and with every word of witness we share, we offer true and lasting hope in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as there are people in the world who do not know Jesus, who do not have hope, our work is not finished. because my wife says I get away from it you can't hear me. <laughs> the last thing in that video said as long as there are people in the world without hope our work is not finished. The Middleburg United Methodist uh, thank you for what you do to bring hope right here in Clay County and around the world. I'm thankful that you support the Gideon Ministry which is carried out around the world by about 250,000 men and participating wives in over 200 countries who distribute printed scripture in over 100 languages. And we do that year round. We share the, the word of hope, the word of the gospel, which I love the way it's stated in Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and that's Jesus. May I read you a testimony we received this April. Here's what it said. For many years, we witnessed our neighbors about God and invited them to church. They're in the flower business, and they always said they were too busy. But now, the time has come when people have had to stop and think about what awaits them in eternity. <coughs> On the very first evening, our neighbors and relatives knelt down and began to ask God for forgiveness and prayer and cry. The daughter of our neighbor wept and regretted she had not come to God for so long. Tears of repentance flowed down her cheeks, the heaviness fell from her heart, and relief came. Our guest received the gift of the scriptures from the Gideons, the saving good news of Jesus Christ. 
In the following days, our neighbors told us they did not part with the gospel even at night. Today is the 47th day of the war, the day on which we're still together, grateful to God that we're still alive and blessed by Him. And yes, that was written by a Ukrainian. Gideons and Auxiliary in western Ukraine and in the surrounding nations are doing what they can, practical needs for those refugees and those displaced within Ukraine. Many have opened their homes. One of our area uh, leaders has opened his house to 22 people. And every night he does a Bible study. And he's already, they've already seen a number of people come to Christ. So, wow. Thank you, Mother Bird, for having a part in that in the Ukraine in a terrible situation. You help us send the word here in Clay County, over the U.S. and around the world, every day, every year. You know these Bibles, we still get them out for over a dollar forward in a hotel Bible for about $5. And I want to remind you that when you give to the Gideons, 50 cents of each dollar goes strictly to scripture overseas in countries where there's not enough funds for the, for the need for scripture including places like the Ukraine. So by placing uh, your gift in this bulletin later on, you'll be supporting that work all around the world. Uh, so we thank you for that support. You can also donate via the uh, website, www.gideons.org. Uh, but you also have been supporting us with these wonderful tribute cards. They're free. You have a display case in the back and by remembering someone who's passed or by honoring someone on a special occasion uh, by praying for someone uh, you put some money in for scripture and, and uh, send a card the card is free and donate Bibles in honor and memory of that person so thank you for participating with us in that my wife and I a number of years ago decided uh, for cases where a loved one has passed away, we're only going to use the tribute cards. Flowers fade and die, but God's Word lives forever. So that's what we do, and we, we pray you will do that too. You know, in the face of that terrible war in the Ukraine, and in the face of economic hardship right here in Clay County, and in the U.S., we had a message of hope. Those Ukrainians had a message of hope even in a war torn country. And we need to share that message. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7, Paul tells us that we have this treasure in an earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And what treasure do we have? We have the Word of God in our heart. We have God Himself, who is the Word, in our heart. And it's our job to share it. But if you like me, you have trouble sharing God's Word. I do. It's not always easy. So I want to encourage you that you have something at your disposal you may not be thinking of. And many of us have in the past used tracts because we hand out Bibles and use special events to present the gospel. Most of us carry a smartphone. And with a Bible app on your phone, I have the Gideon Bible app on my phone, I have the Bible with me almost 24-7. Right? And then to get in Bible app, if you open it, it comes up with a couple of pains. One says, help in time of need. You ever have a need? Do you know people that have needs? Do you know people that don't even know that God loves them? And that He speaks to our human needs? So you can just tap it. Uh, a display that says, help in time of need. And it comes up with 30 or 40 common issues that all of us face. Whether it be fear, anxiety, being critical, death, disaster, discouragement, the future, being guilty, all kinds of issues. And if you click an issue, a number of verses come up that speak to that issue. So you have something in your hands, and I have something in my hands, that I can make use of anywhere I go, everywhere I go. And so I encourage you to use that. Uh, last year, we left for you some of these little cards. But it's just an advertisement for the Bible app. It's got a QR code on the back. So you can hand it to someone and say, hey, do you have a Bible on your phone? 
and make it skin that goes down that it all matter. So I'm, I'm preaching to all of us today. We need to share the message of hope, and we as Gideons are proud that you send us with not only this, but the electronic message of hope. So with that, uh, thank you, Brother Brian. Thank you, United Methodists, for what you do here in Clayton and in support of Gideons. God bless. As he was talking about, he was giving some statistics. I remember several years ago, maybe more now, but at one time, the Gideons gave out a testament every three seconds. Every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of God's word going out to people. And, uh, and, and you know that it will not be returned and void. So that, that is just something to Store in the back of your mind. If, if, if you think we're, if you think we're getting into doing something good, then that's that should be part of what you you know can, can share with folks. Amen. Thank you, brother Randy. Thank you all. You got a word? Yeah, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but uh, my wife and I were internationally travel entertainers years ago, and I was a pretty heavy drinker. Ended up in a lot of motel rooms. Holy Spirit led me to open a lot of motel room. Uh, dresser drawers and read the Gideon Bible. And the Gideon Bible was very influential in our conversion because week after week, we would hit those motels, open the drawers, look for, read Gideon Bibles, and God spoke to our heart, eventually led us out of the nightclub business to make a commitment to Christ and to serve the Lord since then. So, prayer requests and praises. That was one praise. Anything else on your heart, your mind this morning before I get into the slips of paper? Mike finished graduating. Mike finished graduating. Mike, good job. <laughs> yes, in the back. End of the school year. We can take a deep breath and get ready for the next one. <laughs> Heather Humphrey asked prayers for Elaine Arsht, healing from leukemia and COVID. Remember Elaine. And Delitis asked for prayers for JT Evans, who has throat cancer and is going through treatments and just needs prayer. Do y'all remember JT? And those are all on paper. And this is all we seem to have this morning. So if you'd like to come and kneel at the altar space, you're invited to do so now. Or you can stay comfortable right where you're seated. Nonetheless, God's going to move and hear our prayers. So, as long as you're praying. <laughs> well, had one more? <laughs> uh, you, you may have already covered it, but uh, there really need to be in uh, much thought and much prayer for those who folks in the Bible, Texas, and all those 19 fourth graders and two teachers. It's a very, very evil act. And it's a lot less in Texas, but I tell you what, what caused that in Texas is, is the sickness that's creeping into our entire country. And uh, becoming more prevalent and more evil and more active. And, and the only thing that's going to solve that problem is not some psychologist or some politician, it's just going to be God fearing people. And they stand up and do the right thing and enter into a, the role that God has them to do. Thank you for bringing that up. We remember folks in Ukraine. We remember folks suffering from that tragedy in Texas. 
There's a lot in our world that's driving us to this moment of prayer, which is why we're here, church. So let, let's pray. Our most kind, gracious, gentle, loving, Heavenly Father. Oh, how we thank you and praise you for another opportunity at life on this side of heaven. And what a privilege it is to get to serve you in the midst of it. But we need your help. Holy Spirit of the living God, come and inspire us in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls, so that we might be more like Jesus in this dark, lonely, lonesome world. We pray now, Lord, for all these things on our hearts and our minds. Thanking you, God, for being the great I Am, the great physician, the one who is always present and ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. So thank you for hearing us today. Thank you for being active in our lives. And so, Lord, we pray now, we pray hard like saints for these brothers and sisters of ours, our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones who we've named before you who have conditions, Lord, who are going through procedures, who just need a touch right now. A healing touch, Lord, an encouraging touch, a touch of hope for those who are grieving, the loss of loved ones. And, and Lord, we come against evil in the name of Jesus. In His mighty name. There will be no more school shootings, Lord. No more war. do our best, Lord, to usher in this kind of kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And we need help. So we call on you, Holy Spirit, be powerful, be active in our lives, be present, be in us, for us. We'll be careful, Lord, in all we think, say, and do to give you all the glory. So thank you for being in our world. Lord, bring the peace be with families who are displaced, away from home and loved ones, desperately desiring life to be normal again. Oh, how we pray for our nation's leaders, pray for the world leaders, that we might have revival again, that we might have peace, that we might be the kind of kingdom people you called and created us to be. While there's yet time. We're thankful for the Gideons and their ministry. We're thankful, Lord, for the Word, Your Word, that indwells us richly. It comes out, Lord, in the way we live our lives, the way we walk, and the way we talk. So thank You. May Your Word come to us again today as You open our hearts, our minds, our ears to that which You have for us. Help us to absorb it and to live it out as faithful disciples of Jesus, our Rabbi, our Master, our Teacher, our Lord. Thank you now for hearing our prayers. The prayers we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us all to pray. We pray together now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and to be forgiven of those who trespass against us. And give us not the things that Thank you, church. Thank you, Lord. You have your Bibles with you this morning? And I know you do. Some of them's in the pew in front of you. If you'd like to follow, follow along as you look, or if you're on the screen, same chapter, Acts 16, following the story of the disciples. And I'll, I'll remind you, Jesus told them that you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then what? You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the United States. Is that right? And this is why we're here today, witnessing the disciples on mission. And so we saw the conversion of Lydia last week. She and her entire household. Check, check. There we go. I was on you. I saw a red light. <laughs> so we pick up on a second missionary journey. Paul and Silas are up to something here. It's one day 
as we were going to the place of prayer, it reads, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, dragged them into the marketplace before the magistrates or authorities. When they brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd now, they join in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them secure. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights. And rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds, and he said he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The Word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Ah, praise be to God. It's a wonderful story, isn't it? It's a powerful story, isn't it? I want to talk about some of that power for a minute. I mean, a prayer that is so powerful that it can move heaven and earth. Now, is that what happened the last time you said a prayer? <laughs> but maybe you're wrong. Perhaps you were moving heaven and earth in some sort of way unknown to you. And that's kind of what Paul and Silas are up to today. They're moving heaven and earth through their praise and their worship and their praying. Now again, they're visiting this city of Philippi. And I told you last week it was illegal to bring these weird religions into the city. Anything that was unknown was no good. And they, they were followed for several days by this servant girl. Now, it sounded pretty good, like it was positive on, the, on the, the surface because she was promoting their ministry. These men are, are witnesses and serving the Most High God. This is the way to be saved. Paraphrasing a little bit. And she would walk around following them, saying this stuff over and over and over again. Now, how many of you would be annoyed? I'd get annoyed too after the first day or so. But it says for days she did this. Paul gets annoyed and he doesn't speak to the little girl, doesn't, doesn't upset her, but he upsets the spirit in her for he speaks to the spirit, commanding it to come out in the name of Jesus and then what happened? That very hour, something happened to this little girl. Her life was changed. She became different. So different that she couldn't tell the future anymore. She lost that spirit of divination, right? And so that was a lucrative, profiting business for those who owned this girl, which is kind of a problem in and of itself, right? So they own this girl, they lose their business, and so they take Paul and Silas 
throw them out in front of the city, in front of the authorities, make up some more stuff, right? They're, they're doing all this and they, they come up with other things. They get them upset. They, they, this is the part that gets me the most. They have them stripped down. If that ain't humiliating enough, then you get whooped. And they were severely flogged. I think we forget about that as we move on through the story. We forget that as they're praying, as they're praising God, they're feeling pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, they've been whooped, flogged, beaten. And, and now they're still carrying on this business of worshiping and being kingdom ambassadors. And, and so I just want to ask this morning, how do you respond? When you get in one of life's weakest, worst moments, because this was not one of the best times for Paul and Silas, was it? This wasn't one of their uh, top of the day kind of things here. What are we going to do? And I don't want to shame anybody, but I do want to ask because our weakest and our worst moments expose us, don't they? They expose what you really believe in and what we really value. So how did Paul, did Paul and Silas respond by being treated so unjustly? If you look at verse 25, we read about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. I'm sorry, here's another question. If you're in prison, how many of you are going to be praying to God? Yeah, yeah, come on. That's the first thing I'm doing. But I can't say, honestly, that I'd be singing hymns out loud. And if I got some guys with me and they wanted to sing hymns, we could do that. But I don't know that just on my own, sitting there, I've been praying and singing. But that's what Paul and Silas were doing. They were having them a worship service. In their weakest and worst moment, in a prison cell, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God. And I wonder if that's the way we respond when we're placed in a really bad situation. And as mentioned, there are bad situations all around us. Some of you are going into one very soon. Some of you are in one now. Or some of you are coming out of one. It kind of works that way, right? We're either in it, going in it, or coming out of it. Some kind of situation. So I wonder if we'll be as ready as Colonel Robert Certain, who in 1972 was shot down uh, over Hanoi, Vietnam. He and only two others of his uh, plane were survivors. They spent 101 days in this prison camp before they were liberated. But what was interesting is when they were first there, they were having one of their little services together. The Christian men would get together, they would sing, pray, do whatever they could to kind of lift their spirits and try to make it through another day. When one of the guards comes over and asks them, what good does it do to pray to a God that's not going to rescue you? That's a good question, isn't it? I remember uh, I've been to Haiti a couple of times. Uh, I think the last one was in 2008 or something. It's been a while. But I remember uh, we would go in and there would be a church just like this. Except there would be no roof, no ceiling. Just walls of brick and just floor of rock. And they would wait and they would pray. Years and years they would pray that somebody would come and bring them a roof. Build their roof. And that's what this one particular church we would go and do ministry with. Just put roofs on churches. They would build pews and then we'd do, do ministry that way. Well, they were bullied by people in their community. And this is one of the stories they would tell us. Because they waited for years and they prayed for years believing that God's going to bless them. And put a roof on their church. But people, others didn't believe it. And they would pick on them. Where's your God? How much longer is your God going to be? I mean, it's only been two years, three years. These churches would stand for a long time before they get a roof. But isn't that kind of curious? And so just like Colonel Certain, these guys have to live in this sort of environment, unknown when, when God's going to come back. Do you think they were praying to be liberated? Probably so. But were Paul and Silas praying to be liberated? It doesn't say that. We don't know, but most likely that, that they slipped that prayer in there. Did they pray that God would just come and save them somehow, miraculously? Maybe, maybe not.
But I do know that they were praising God. They were worshiping God. So I know at the very least, they were lifting God up for God's goodness. Can't we agree on that at least? They were worshiping God, lifting up the name of God, praising God, when all of a sudden, the earthquake. And you can't blame the earthquake for what happened, right? I think God brought the earthquake, obviously, because it loosed all the doors flung open and it loosed the shackles on their feet, y'all. Earthquakes can't do that. And they were free men now. And they could have, obviously, they could have run right out of there. How many of you at that point were done? You're gone. <laughs> See you later. That was the miracle I've been waiting on. I'm out of here. But they didn't. And it says because he knew he had this mission, right? He has this plan to bring salvation to these people. He was right where God wanted him to be. But can you imagine a, a, what Colonel Certain and his people, they, they had something to say to this man. They replied, what makes you think we're in prison? God has taken us out of this place and has set us free. And there is nothing you can do to imprison us. Oh, you can hold our bodies for a time, but you will never, never imprison our hearts and our minds. Don't you love that? And after returning from Vietnam, he becomes an Air Force chaplain. He retires from the military and serves as an Episcopal priest for uh, several years across the United States. So God did a work in Colonel Certain's life as well. Second question, this this. Scripture begs to ask, who is listening to you? I've said it before, y'all. Your talk talks and your walk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Right? People are watching you, looking at you, wondering why you do what you do, or waiting for you to fail <laughs> because you claim to be good. But look what it says, verse 25, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. That's important, isn't it? These prisoners were listening to them. Did you know that sometimes you and I, and, and this can be scary, we are contagious. <laughs> the stuff we have, Christians, it ought to be viral. <laughs> huh? Other people notice what our mood, our actions, our words, our inaction. Now I'm not trying to say act happy when you're devastated. I'll say be real. If you don't do anything in this life, be real. I'm not suggesting you fake faithfulness. Don't fake it. Don't fake gratitude when you know your world's coming apart. I'm saying that in our weakest and worst moments, people will see that tiny flicker of God in your life, that tiny glimmer of hope that comes from knowing that your life is not consumed by your present circumstances. Isn't that real? But, you're, but by your trust in God. And somebody will be listening to you. Will they hear the hope of God? Or will they be more depressed? Our faithfulness, our obedience doesn't have to involve big, impressive efforts. Sometimes they are big and impressive efforts, but sometimes being faithful is just the small things in life. Showing up and paying attention. That's what my evangelism professor used to say. That's half of evangelism. Showing up and paying attention. But don't be intimidated by the fact that people are listening to you. People don't get comfort and hope from your adequacy. Remember that. In fact, the opposite is usually true. Your inadequacy, your helplessness, offered up in faith and love, still have the power to bring hope and light and life to others who might be in the same prison that you are. Oh, we could just set some people free. But there's a freedom tsunami that's been unleashed. And it's starting with Paul and Silas. So here's my question. Who needs to be set free by your example? There are people in your sphere of influence, right, that I won't be able to reach or teach like you will. 
Only you have the opportunity that, that's going to come your way. This, this freedom tsunami is being unleashed. And I like verse 27. The, the jailer awakes. He awoke. <laughs> and assuming the prisoners would all escape, he pulls out his sword. He's ready to take his own life. Paul stops him because he and Silas, they have this mission. And they want to bring more people to faith in Jesus Christ. And this guy counts. This guy's family counts. Let's start right where we are with who we have in front of us. And they told him, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. I wish it was just that easy, though. Hey, y'all believe in Jesus and be saved over here. See how easy that was? They just bought into it. <laughs> it doesn't always work that way, though, does it? That's why we have to use our talk, but we also use our walk. And we'll get there. The jailer brought them into his house, set a meal before them. He was filled with joy. Does that not happen when you become a believer? I told y'all, we're not baptized in vinegar. All right? Come on. He and his whole household. I love that. He and his whole household came to faith in Jesus and were set free by just this example of Paul and Silas. All right, praise team. You ready? These prayers, they didn't just <clears throat> set the prisoners free for this brief moment in time, did they? They set all the prisoners free, which led the jailer to come and his whole household be set free and become members of the household of God. So I pray that you all will be able to pray and praise God just like Paul and Silas, but not to receive anything from God but simply because you know that your life and your hope are found in Him and only Him. And I know that through your example, you will show others faith in Jesus Christ, the truth of Jesus Christ. And the story of freedom through Jesus Christ will continue through you, your words, and your actions. And it will bring salvation to others. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's get to work, church. You know, there's times that said, we don't really understand what freedom truly means. Is that right? The freedom that we learn of in Christ is not the same as the physical freedom that we have been given by all those who we honor tomorrow. That's a different kind of freedom. And it's a wonderful kind of freedom. The freedom Christ gives us is a spiritual freedom. And it's wonderful also. And we're going to sing about that. Let's stand. Let's pray that God helps us truly realize just how free we are. I cling to the cross and everything it means. I know it's the only hope there is.
There's a revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Thank you. 